Amateur radio stations in Australia are now required to have a reasonable understanding of the risks involved when transmitting reasonably large levels of radio frequency energy. The Australian Communications Authority has issued a number of papers to do with exposure to EMR or electromagnetic radiation. For example, here is a paper designed for uh, amateur radio operators to see if their station complies with the ACA requirements. Here is another paper which sets out the guidelines on the assessment of installations against electromagnetic radiation exposure limits. The effects of electromagnetic energy on living tissue are quite complex. Here in the ACMA publication we have a graph showing electric field strength in volts per meter versus frequency and the limits for a number of different scenarios. One scenario is for what's called the time average general public. Here we see at 10 megahertz the limit is 20 volts per meter and this holds true up to around 500 megahertz. Here is another paper published by the Australian government titled Maximum Exposure Levels to Radio Frequency Fields in the Frequency Range 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. This particular publication contains quite a lot of information and it's suggested that you uh, get a copy of that, that paper and, uh, and go through it and have a bit of a read. So as radio amateur operators we need to be aware of what our requirements are for the safety of our of personnel or people coming near our transmitting station and this is where the RF power meter measurements can be quite handy. There are a number of tools available on the web to allow you to find out what your uh, safe distances from your transmitting antenna are. For example here is a piece of software that, that's written by Doug MacArthur VK3UM which allow, allows you to put in your transmitter power, type of antenna, modulation etc and it gives you a figure of how close or far away you need to be from the antenna. For the general public and for level 1 compliance if you're running under 100 watts if, you, if the general public cannot get within the distance as shown by this calculator then you will be complying with the ACMA level 1 requirement. By that we mean inaccessible by way of a fence or locked gate or whatever means you have available to you to stop anyone getting close to your Transmi uh, transmitting antenna. If you run more than 100 watts you do run the risk of falling into what's called the level 2 compl uh, compliance um, and, and that is under those requirements the, the lowest point of your antenna has to be 10 meters above the ground. Now that's not hard if you've got a, a tall wind-up tower but it may not be that easy with vertical antennas and, and long wires etc. So if you have to comply with the level 2 requirements you need to then start getting serious about taking measurements and these measurements need to be taken by somebody who is trained to take them with qualified instruments that are calibrated. I must say even under level 1 compliance under 100 watts uh, these uh, mathematical calculations and, and other tools are quite good. You, you, may also, you may really actually want to know what the signal strength is for your own safety and this is where the RF power meter becomes quite useful. Although the RF PM1 is not a certified power meter or a laboratory standard it does give quite reasonable results and from those results you can then decide whether or not you need to take the matter further to see whether you comply with level 2 compliance or whether you think your station is safe for your own peace of mind. Now the measurements we took with the RF PM1 power meter have been tabulated in this table. For example we measured minus 14 dBm at 1 meter, uh, minus 33 at 10 meters, minus 48 dBm at 50. These dBm figures now need to be converted to electric field strengths. When taking the electric field strength measurements with the RF PM1 power meter there was one very important element we used and that was a reasonably accurate, accurate and uh, pickup antenna and here we used the VK1OD uh, single turn square loop. The reason we used Owen Duffy's uh, untuned loop is that it gives us a very important parameter called the antenna factor. We need to know the antenna factor in order to calculate the electric field strength in volts per meter. Owen shows graph of the antenna factor versus frequency for his uh, 600 millimeter by 600 millimeter loop but he also provides a spreadsheet 
which allows you to change the size of the loop, the diameter of the wire, etc., and the frequency to get antenna factors for different size loops to suit your particular requirements. Here is an example of the printout from his Excel spreadsheet, which shows the various input parameters and the resulting graph and figures. For example, the loop I built has an antenna factor of 34.28 dBm and a gain of minus 40.11 dBi. The wire I used was 0 0.00135 meters or 1.35 millimeters in diameter. It also takes into account such things as a, a, a figure for the ballon loss, the one-to-one -one ballon loss, and the length of the cable between the pickup antenna and the power meter. This is a simple sketch I've made of the loop and the one-to-one -one voltage ballon. The ballon is uh, simply 12 turns of bifilar winding, two, turn, two windings, wound on an FT37-43 former, or toroid. Because the antenna is balanced, you can get away with a two winding uh, voltage ballon. If the antenna was unbalanced, you would need three windings. The first thing we need to do is convert dBm, as read on the power meter, 50 ohms, into dB microvolts. And this is done by adding 107 dB to whatever the dBm reading is. The reference for this equation is from the Hewlett Packard publication called Spectrum Analysis, Field Strength Measurement, and it's uh, application note 150-10, which gives you the equation to convert dBm into dB microvolts, as you can see here. DBM reading plus 107 equals 20 equals dB microvolts. From dB microvolts, we now have to go to dB microvolts per meter, and we do this by adding the antenna factor. In my case, the antenna factor was 34.3 dB meter. So we add 43, 30, sorry, 34.3 to whatever dB microvolts we've calculated. Generally, with the antenna factor, the bigger this number, the less efficient the antenna is at converting an electric field into a terminal voltage for the meter to read. Uh, the smaller, in other words, the smaller it gets or the less efficient it gets, the bigger this number has to be. So, in effect, it has to be added to whatever reading we have to get back to the, the actual field strength per meter. So here you see my measurements of dBm converted to dB microvolt, converted to dB microvolt per meter, and then using a number of calculators that you can find on the web, for example this one here from one of the RF engineering companies, you can enter your um, volts per meter or your um, dB microvolts per meter and come up with volts per meter um, and various other things such as amps per meter, milliwatts per centimeter squared which is over here and watts per meter squared the important one is volts per meter because that is what the axis of the graph published by the ACMA shows for the safe limits. So for example for the readings I have taken at a distance of one meter the electric field strength is 2.32 volts per meter. These uh, remember the demonstration I did was at 14.15 megahertz. The power flux density in watts per meter is 1.42 by 10 to the minus 2 watt per meter or in milliwatts per centimeter squared 1.42 by 10 to the minus 3. I have uh, shown the five readings here on the table up to a distance of 50 meters and these are the figures that I've received. For example at a distance of 50 meters the field strength in volts per meter is 0 0.05 volts per meter. At 50 meters for a 20 for a 14 meg transmission, we are essentially in the far field. There are complications for power measurements in the near field, and again, you can refer to the ACMA publications, which basically show uh, a graph which indicates the fall off of power or electromagnetic field power uh, for distance within the near field, and also the position of the transition between the near field and the far field. In the far field region the, the electromagnetic field strength falls off as the distance squared. In the near field approximately as the distance only but there are ripples in that graph. 